Hello, I'm Tony Botting at Go Engineer. I'm a simulation specialist. In this video, we'll use combinations of static studies to help develop a fatigue analysis on a shell element model. This model is available for access from menu item Help, SolidWorks Simulation, Tutorials in the Fatigue section. This is a 3 8 inch thick steel spring used in child's playground equipment, such as the one shown here. The main spring is represented by the curved surfaces of the model and is fixed at the bottom surface. The horizontal bars on the photograph are a kind of stirrup on which the rider can place their feet and stand up, too. The stirrup on the CAD model is represented by this closed loop of surfaces. The saddle area for loading is here, and the area for applying standing loads is here. For fatigue cycling, the simulation is set up as six events, which are various combinations of existing studies with scaling factors for a dead load, loads on the saddle area, and loads on the stirrup. The table shows the event numbers and how they reference the existing studies. I'll show this table again. This model is meshed with shell elements which have top and bottom surfaces, so we will check the fatigue damage to both sides of the shell elements. I'll show the static studies first. Here is a table representing them. This first one, called sitting, has the 50 pound saddle load plus the 10 pound dead load. Here's the stress. The second one, called Standing 50, has the 10-pound dead load and the two 25-pound loads in the stirrup. The third one, called Standing 100, is the same as the previous one but has two 50-pound loads on the stirrup. The fourth one, called Standing 200, is the same as the previous but has two 100-pound loads on the stirrup. I'll show the mesh of shell elements. A key to remember here is that the mesh must be the same for each study. OK, now we'll define the fatigue simulation. We choose Simulation, Study, and we'll call it Top Face, and choose Fatigue. And in the options, ensure we have constant amplitude events with defined cycles, and click OK. Next, we'll access the properties of the study. The events are sequenced in this example, so we'll choose No Interaction. Sometimes the event sequencing is not known, so you could choose Random Interaction. The software will select worst case sequencing, so you would typically see more damage with the random interaction option. Use equivalent stress and check the shell face is top. We'll put in a fatigue strength reduction factor of 90%. We'll define the first event according to the table. I'll pin up the dialog. The first one is 7,500 cycles. The loading ratio is 0 0.25. The referenced study is called sitting, and the scale factor is 1. So I'll OK that, and the software will add an event. Now we'll do the second one. It has 2,000 cycles and scale factor of 1.83, same reference study. Click OK. The third one has 500 cycles, scale factor of 3.5, and uses sitting for the reference study. The fourth has 7,500 cycles and uses reference study standing 50, and the scale factor is 1. Keep doing this and close the dialog, and you can see the six events added to the loading folder. Now we'll select the component in the tree and apply the fatigue data. This test data curve came with the model. Make sure it has the same test data loading ratio as the loading scenario on the model. Now we'll just run the model and look at the damage results. This top face run shows about 83% damage due to the loading. You can report that the loading consumes about 83% of the fatigue life of the structure on the tops of the shells. Here we've duplicated the study but changed the properties of the new one to run on the bottom face of the shells. The results show 129% life consumed by this loading. This means the structure fails so the loading is too severe or the design needs a change of geometry or material for better fatigue resistance. In this video we showed using combinations of static studies to develop a fatigue analysis on a shell model. 